Welcome to Good First Lutheran Church here in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Welcome all of you radio listeners. Today is June 13th. Uh, it's the uh, second uh, Sunday in June, which means several things for us. One is the drive-up communion, which will take place out here by the bell tower, that side of the building, 9 o'clock until 9.45. And then our second service is at 10 o'clock. Now, today is the day of our congregational picnic, church picnic, and we're also recognizing all the volunteers of this congregation. So I invite you to come at 11.30, uh, or either come to this service and come back at 11.30, come to the 10 o'clock service and hang out and have uh, a picnic with us, brats, hot dogs, burgers, uh, other items, and uh, some dessert, and fellowship, and music, and all kinds of great things. That's what we've been trying to get back to, right? So I invite you to come today to our church picnic. Again, thank you for watching us, all of you live streamers, and those of you who will be watching later on today. Some other announcements. Uh, we are no longer asking you to sign up ahead of time, like go on line and sign up and but we do encourage you to look for these little purple cards and fill that these cards out this is nothing new we've been doing this for years it basically tells us that uh, you attended church today and yes you received communion today and and uh thank you visitors who have indicated that you're visiting and welcome and and uh and a lot of times if we get a phone number or address, we could send a little note. We, we try not to be too quick with that. We don't want to scare you, but nevertheless, we, we love to hear from you. And so we're going to kind of follow who's, who's with us this way, as we've always done. And then again, if you did not sign up, we wanted to know who was going to come to the picnic. Kind of like if you were having a party at your house and you might want to know how many people are coming so you know how many chairs to set up and how much food so but say you didn't know but now today with the weather being a little bit cooler and you think gee i want i'd like to come we plan for a little extra so come on some other announcements next week is father's day so get those dads up there those grandpa pictures and uh, don't just assume because you sent in one 20 years ago it's still going to be up there they're always trying to update those so if you say i love dad's picture that was there from two years ago then they'll put dad's picture up there again but uh, we ask for you to submit those get those in the office as soon as you can to april and she'll get them updated there are many other things that you've read on the announcements uh, before the service and in your e-announcements and uh, just go online and look but i believe that's enough for today for our information let us direct our hearts and minds to worship um, I think a note quickly on communion. We will still have the two stations. We're a little bit lighter this first service, probably because of the picnic. But we're still going to have you come up. We just need some assistance. Like uh, Bob and I will, will be serving the bread, but we just need like two assistants on each side to serve the wine. Okay, so just come forth when it's that time. Um, I'll have you stand only as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. The one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Take a moment for your own personal confession and, and reflection before we together confess. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Hear the good news. Beloved people of God, in Jesus Christ, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is, al there is always enough. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. 
you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn, We Walk by Faith, page 635. We Walk by Faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion that the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This morning's reading comes from the second book of Corinthians, beginning at chapter 5 with verse 6. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Jesus frequently uses parables to teach ordinary people as they are able to hear and understand. Images of sowing and growing show 
the validity of God's kingdom. I have you stand only as you're able. The Holy Gospel of this day, according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seeds on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seeds would sprout and grow. He did not know, he does not know how the earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes out with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sowed upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on, of, on earth. Yet, when it is sown and grows up, becomes the largest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air may make their nest in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the coming and living Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Parables, the kingdom of God. Today's first parable is a story of a man or a person who sows seeds. But in this story, it kind of describes maybe more of an incompetent person sowing seeds. He throws them. He scatters them. And the, that word scatter in the Greek form is balo, which just simply means to throw or to toss. Now, my father was a farmer and he never tossed his seeds or threw them. They were planted in rows with an orderly manner. But this man, this person that Jesus describes, just goes out and throws the seeds. But more so, I think, being incompetent is he has, he know, he has no idea how they grow. He goes to bed, he wakes up in the morning, and they just grow. He doesn't, it doesn't say that he weeds, that he waters, that he cultivates. It just grows. And Jesus even said that the earth produces of itself without the man or the sower's involvement. The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is like that. The only job for the sower is to scatter or throw those seeds. I find and I think that this parable not only talks about the parable of the good news, what the kingdom of heaven is like, but it also war is a warning for us today, the church. Now, what does it mean to throw seeds or to sow seeds? We, in my previous call, we always took a mission trip or a youth, a high school youth trip in the summer. And we always tried to, to go to a place where there was a disaster. So one year we went to Oklahoma City and Moore is where we stayed. And some of the children were too young to show up on the work site and use power tools. But our job, the children's job, was to sow seeds in the ditch lines. Now, someone had given this church bags and bags of seeds of some kind of plant that would replace all the foliage in the ditch lines where the tornado wiped out homes and buildings and trees and as it was graded and cleaned up. 
to reduce from erosion and all those types of things, our job was to sow seeds. And we had bags and bags of seeds, and we were doing that for three or four days, all day long, just walking down the side of the road and throwing seeds. And I was trying to be not so much funny with the kids, but trying to be light-hearted and humorous because they didn't like doing this. This was hot. Remember like the last few days? Being in Oklahoma in July was like what the weather was in the last few days, walking on the street, on the country road, throwing seeds. And I would just simply tell them, our job is to sow seeds. Not ask any questions, just sow seeds. And it is not even our job to decide where the seeds fall. Rocky soil, good soil, in amongst the weeds. See, those are another parables that Jesus talked about. Our job is just simply to sow the seeds. Now, some of the kids, I know that they would sneak off and take a break and, or pretend they were sowing seeds when you, know, when you weren't looking. They would you know, play around in that. But it was hard. And in this parable, our job simply is to sow seeds. The earth produces its own. God takes care of everything else. It's a warning, though, for us to think about this very basic instruction or uh, the need for us to sow seeds. It's the Word of God is what we're sowing, right? And you have to ask yourself, what is the seeds that that are being sown here? What what are these seeds? They're the Word of God. But what is the Word of God? Ask yourself, When you and I are sowing seeds, this is a parable really about seeds, but not about seeds. It's about seeing and not seeing. It's about sharing the Word of God to others, to the world. We are to sow seeds, the Word of God. And just just throw them out there. Just scatter them out there. But think about it for a moment. What is... What's the good news? What's the word? What's the gospel, really? What is the gospel? What's the good news? Think about that. The first thing that comes to my mind is when Jesus rose from the grave, he told Mary and those who first encountered him and Peter and John to go ahead and tell people that he is risen. That's good news. He's alive, right? At Easter and those Sundays after Easter, the gospel, the good news that Jesus lives. You see it on billboards. He lives. He's alive. Or Jesus saves, right? That's good news. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus saves. He can save you. He will save you. Jesus loves you. I think, I think, uh, I thought I heard you guys, uh, Dave and, and Carol, They're probably going to sing and tell you how much Jesus loves you. That's good news. That's gospel. What else is gospel? What are those seeds that we are to sow? Just simply scatter, not orderly like my father planting fields, but for us just to spread those words of good news, gospel to people. What else? Jesus loves. Jesus saves. Jesus lives. He's alive In my house, my Father's house has many rooms. I will come back and take you to myself. You have a place with me. This is all good news. This is what we tell people. Trust. Trust in the Lord. Walk by faith and not by sight. Gospel, right? So so the warning, the good... The good part is is sowing the gospel, spreading the seeds, throwing it out there. Jesus says simply do that. It's not for us to understand if they're going to grow or not. It's not for us to understand how that is going to affect people or community. But the warning is that how do we do that? If we spend so much time getting ready to plant or getting all of our technological stuff and getting all of our people lined up and the furniture and the wall, paint color and the carpet, we might just simply forget to spread the good news. And we see that. Did you hear about the church that moved 
from one part of town to out in the suburbs because they were living, that church was nestled in a very needy part of town. And everyone that came to church had great needs. And they couldn't stand it any longer, so they moved into the suburbs. And they grew, yes, but they grew in a different way. They weren't serving God's people as they were. They were no longer scattering seeds. They were focused on growing as a building, but no longer sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And as a warning for us, our simple task is just throw the seeds out there. Just get rid of them. Share God's word and God's love to each other. That second parable about the mustard seed, I mean, you think about that, and oh, gee, that's really not the smallest seed on earth. I mean, I'm sure you could come up with a smaller seed. I mean, I, mean, I spent a lot of time thinking about that, and yeah, there are many other smaller seeds, right? But, but in comparison, so he's, Jesus saying it's small seed, small seed on earth, very small seed, kind of give you this idea that it's little, right? If you dropped it, the older we get, if we dropped it, we'd have a harder time finding it, right? I mean, that's how small it is. But then when it grows... It grows into something very large. Palestinian times, it said that those, those bushes could be like six, seven feet tall. I'd need a ladder eight feet tall to get to the top. And then the funny thing is that the birds move in. And they take over. They make nests in its shade. If the kingdom of God is like that, like a mustard seed, so small and so tiny that I can't f see it and find it if I drop it, and it grows into something big that it becomes a bird sanctuary, that many birds can move in and find shade. The last few days we were looking for shade if we were outside, sitting in the graces of our Lord, keeping comfortable. Somebody once told me that they cut their tree down because the birds made so many mess, so much of a mess it just ruined their patio. Just cut that tree down. The kingdom of God is like that. Something that grows into something that many people can find refuge and peace and a home, a place to belong, a place to feel loved. It's God's plan. The danger is that we have our own plan. We want the kingdom of God to look nice, be more like an herb garden than a bird sanctuary. Or we want nice people to come other than those needy people. See, the kingdom of God is God's plan. Just because like those seeds you know, that mustard seed that I dropped I couldn't find? doesn't look like much. But the fact is that God has a plan for it to grow. Just because I couldn't see how it was going to happen, I can't see God's plan doesn't mean that God's not at work. Those are the conversations we have a lot lately. Where's God in all this? God's just busy working. Working through these situations. God just needs us to, to spread those seeds of love good news. Tell people it's going to be okay. Hang in there. The Lord is at work. Jesus loves you. Jesus knows your pain and your suffering. Have you ever felt the hand of Jesus in your life? Personally, in the last couple of days, well, yesterday I went to like a little family reunion to a part of my, to the Went family that has not been getting along I haven't seen those people for almost 40 years because over greed, the family split. So the parents are basically gone, and it's the children now have a desire to reconnect. And oh, it was so heavy. I, emotionally and psychologically, I went there with our daughters, the three of us, and my brothers, and it was so heavy. It was, it was good. And we talked about about the good old days, but there was so much death and so much hardship. So I come home. And then, of course, my wife would be assisting today, but she's taking care of her dying father with some other members of my family, the children. 
So I found myself kind of weepy, you know, just the heaviness, right? A little weepy, as I said on the back patio last night. And I felt the hand of God. I actually felt his hand, and I went like this, and there was nothing there. But it was the Lord saying, it's okay. I know how you feel. I'm with you, and it's going to be okay. Our job today is just let people know that the Lord's in control. The Lord produces what he will produce. But our job is to tell each other, Jesus loves you. He's risen. He's alive. He's prepared a place for you here and in the next life. And he'll never forsake you. And we are saved by grace through our faith and even faith the size of that tiny mustard seed that I can no longer see. Amen. Holy God, we praise your name. Have we stand only as you're able to use your hymnals, page 414. Holy God, we praise your name. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this third Sunday after Pentecost, let us unite before God in prayer, responding to each petition with the words, Hear our prayer. Holy God, font of blessings, we pray for the church that the seeds of faith which you plant take root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the animals, trees, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought, flooding, and pestilence, that wild animals thrive in the habitats they require. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and for those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially Lana, Kayla, Ron, Brenda, John, Tom, Mary, Alan, Jean, Barb, Richard, Ben, Tina, Justin, Eileen, Andy, Wendy, Jim, Amy, Joyce, Landon, Davy, Dale, Tim, Ellen, Bill, Judy, Charles, Betty, Jackie, Ross, Ethan, Paul, Sam, Lisa, and Diane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for all those who have died in the faith, and for those whom we remember here before you, we offer our thanks. For all who will die today, we ask your mercy, and at the end we join with all your people in perfection of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord, trusting in your abiding grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray the offering prayer together. O God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks, giving it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken and given for you. Eat and do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, giving it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink and do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Forget us our day our daily bread.
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive an invitation. Here at First Lutheran, we practice open communion, which means simply that if you are hungry and thirsty, come to the table. Come to receive our Lord and Savior. Come receive the gospel, the good news, his body and blood. There'll be two lines to come up the aisle. Come to the, each station has grape juice and wine. The wine is red. The grape juice is light-colored. Substance in the center, gluten-free, is at these stations. And then there's containers or trays where you put the empties. Uh, Carol and Dave are going to be singing. Um, and also, uh, they're going to be with us this afternoon. Uh, the table is set. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive a blessing. The blessing of God who provides us feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending and closing him. Lead on, O King Eternal. Lead on, O King Eternal, page 805. who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.